Thank you very much, Warren, and also thank you to uh, to all the uh, attendees, and uh, uh, specifically to uh, Kerry for putting on this event. Yesterday, many of you would have heard uh, talks by uh, uh, by um, Northern Star and others about the gold deposits and uh, how they've grown the company through acquisition. Well, at the bottom end of the uh, in the junior sector, somebody's got to do the exploration so that those companies can acquire those deposits at a later date. We think uh, sandstone is a great project for a number of reasons, and I hope I'll I'll uh, convince you of that. We're going to talk about the keys to discovering gold at Sandstone, and this is a process-driven uh, exploration project. Uh, we're not going forward. Uh, disclaimer and forward-looking statements, obviously. Uh, just a corporate overview of, uh, we've got a, a very small uh, market capitalization, a bit over $8 million, $9 million. Uh, we had cash at the 30th of September of uh, half a million dollars. Not a lot of money for a junior company. Um, a board of uh, experienced uh, directors, Terry Streeter, some of you may know, Western Areas, uh, myself, uh, 41 years experience, 20 years with Rio Tinto, uh, Great Central Mines, Johnson's Well Mining, and Mark Creasy. Terry Wheeler, the, uh, the uh, owner of Genalysis, uh, sold Genalysis to Intertech back in 2009. Dr. Jingbing Wong is a uh, very accredited uh, Chinese geologist uh, running Sinotech Minerals. Um, why sandstone? Uh, There's a map here showing the, uh, the 80 million ounce plus endowment for the Yulgarn in Western Australia, Jundee 10 million ounces, Waluna, uh, Bronzewing 4, Agnew, etc. Most of these deposits started out as either small operations by old timers 100 years ago or uh, more modern ex ex uh, discoveries during the 1990s as open pits. And as time went by, deeper drilling on these deposits showed that the oxide gold mineralisation that was found was really a geochemical anomaly. The real ore body is at depth in the primary zone. That's what I'll hope to demonstrate this morning. So back in uh, the 1890s, uh, sandstone gold was discovered uh, at uh, Arroyo and Hacks. The old timers took out roughly half a million ounces between uh, 16 and 24 grams per tonne. It's all free milling. There's no known refractory gold at sandstone. Uh, subsequently, in the, uh, between 93 and 2010, actually 2010, there were two main producers there. Herald Resources took out about 125,000 ounces of oxide material, put them through a small plant, and subsequently Troy Resources mined Bull China, found by Battle Mountain. They found uh, Lord Nelson and Lord Henry, and they took out about half a million ounces as well, uh, put it through the same plant, the old Herald plant. Uh, Lord Nelson and Lord Henry, um, these two deposits were uh, mined, as I said, they took the oxide, this is uh, Troy Resources, took the oxide material out. There's still material in the bottom of the pits there, but it was too hard for the uh, existing plant. Some early work there done between 83 and 93 by Western Mining, but between 2010 and 2016 nothing really happened at, uh, at Sandstone. We acquired the project in uh, June 2016, and the tenements were granted in, uh, in September 2016. So we've been on the ground for 24 months only, which isn't a long period of time. Um, we've got a vision of finding a million ounces at uh, Sandstone. Some people say, well, that's a, that's a stretch target and a five million ounce in the long term. But if you look at the gold mineralisation in the greenstone bounce around us, I think it's a, uh, it's a potential, but it just takes time and, and good quality geoscience and money. Um, we have a mineral systems approach to exploration, very process driven. We have acquired uh, all of our data from the mines department. We didn't have a database to start off with. We've compiled uh, geology, geochemistry, drilling, uh, etc., flown our own detailed airborne magnetic surveys. And I've said earlier that the oxide deposits are the geochemical anomalies that lead to the discoveries of multi-million ounce deposits. And hopefully over the next few minutes, I'll, I'll convince you of that story. So we've taken a systematic approach. We, uh, we see further because we stand at the shoulders of many other explorers who've done very good quality work, but often it's been a patchwork quilt driven by uh, the tenements that they held at the time. We're very fortunate to have uh, the majority of the sandstone greenstone belt, 800 square kilometres. There's about 20 or 30 square kilometres that we don't have that's held by, by others. So we've got detailed airborne magnetics. We started off doing a looking through the, the cover 
bit like this, bit like the Yandel belt and the Amana belt, there's a lot of soil and sand over the geology. So the geology is obscured and you need detailed mag airborne magnetic data to understand the structure and the lithology. And at the end of the day, all these gold deposits are, are controlled by lithology and structure. Surface geochemistry, we've domained and uh, decided which parts of the belt we want to focus on. And uh, we've done, in the last 24 months, we've done, according to this, 24,000, 23,000 metres of air core drilling. But notably, the historical drilling has been about 30 metres, that air core and RAB drilling. So we're actually going deeper than previous explorers and we're getting better information. Um, we've also done resource or RC drilling and our RC drilling is uh, 16,000 metres and our average hole is about 130 metres. Once again, double the depth of previous explorers, giving us a better understanding. This particular map really summarises the systematic approach we have. We have a new geological map which is based on a better understanding of the magnetics, detailed airborne magnetics. We've taken over 3,000 soil samples recently, which we've added to the existing soil geochemical database. And what I'll demonstrate to, I can't actually see it from, I can't point to it, but uh, deposits such as Bull China, uh, mined by Troy, over 200,000 ounces. There was a very distinct laterite gold geochemical anomaly there. If you look at Lord Nelson, there's a distinct laterite and soil geochemical anomaly there. If you look at uh, Arroyo and Hacks that were mined by the old timers, they found that by using soil sampling methods there as well. So it's a very effective method and what we've done at the present time is we're, we're tackling two, two types of targets. One are areas that have been drilled by previous explorers and there's some geochemistry there in the drill holes. We're going deeper and better understanding of the geology. And secondly, we've taken their soil data, added our own soil data to it and turned up some very, very good targets, which we'll press on shortly. The air core drilling, there's some air core drillings that we've done at Vanguard and Indomitable. Last Monday, uh, Monday week ago, we announced the resource estimates for the Vanguard and Indomitable camps. Uh, we've added about 126,000 ounces there. We've now got 260 odd thousand ounces in chalk compliant 2012. And over the next 12 months, we want to double that, at least through focused drilling, both on the existing targets and the soil anomalies that we've generated. We've got a number of uh, walk-up drill targets for 2019 and obviously subject to funding, um, we'd like to get in and drill these. This is uh, the Indomitable Camp. It's uh, over two kilometres long, over a thousand metres wide. That's about the size of the Jundee Goldfield at the present time. It's covered by soil and sand. There's no outcrop. It's a blind deposit. Um, if you look at uh, this map here, it's a surface map. Very little outcrop, but we've got favourable lithologies. We're looking at a, a, uh, a north-east trending structure that cuts through the favourable stratigraphy that we've identified. And uh, in the bottom there, we've got tiger moth. I'll show you some sections. We've got indomitable in the middle and indomitable north up there. This is a section through indomitable, a long section through indomitable. The shallow material is quite low grade. This is in the oxide zone. As we go deeper, what we find is we get closer to the transition zone, the grade increases. And ultimately, the real ore bodies are down in the primary zone. The real ore bodies are the, the high-grade deposits. This is tiger moth. It's got a laterite anomaly sitting over the top of it, similar to Bull China, sort of grades in there. It doesn't outcrop at the surface. These deposits weren't found by the old timers because the old timers couldn't see through the alluvium. With shallow drilling, air core drilling down to 20 metres, we can identify these types of anomalies and then subsequently do the drilling. And as you'll see, the primary zone, or as we go deeper from the oxide zone into the primary zone, the grades are increasing. The resource estimates we've done recently are really just focused on the oxide zone, largely, um, because that's where most of the drilling has been. We have a number of holes into the primary zone, but uh, there's insufficient drilling in the primary zone at the present time to estimate resources. That's something we plan to do during 19, 2019. The Vanguard camp is another area uh, a bit down the track from uh, from Indomitable, same sort of area, 1,200 metres, right beside the uh, Menzies Road. Number of old workings there by the old timers, quite shallow. We've done a considerable amount of drilling there in the southern area, which we call Vanguard. There's uh, an area to the north called Vanguard North. And this is, once again, a lithostructurally controlled deposit. We have a favourable lithology. 
we have uh, cross-cutting structures and what you see down there is A, A is a cross-section I'll just show you, that's in the resource. Uh, B, B and C, C are not yet in the resource. We have drill holes in there suggesting that there are substantial, uh, substantial gold mineralisation there but we haven't got it in the resource. So that's another area that we'll be hitting in 2019. There's that uh, section in Vanguard. You can see 22 metres at 3.3 grams per tonne. Um, once again, the area is covered with soil and sand and alluvium. Um, as we go deeper in that material, we start seeing the higher grades. This is that section BB I talked about. This is a plunging structure. Uh, it's not in resource at the present time. It needs more drilling, but it's very, very close to the uh, main Vanguard deposit. There's a whole series of these structures that we intend to drill during 2019. Here's section CC, same again. Um, our drilling's been predominantly in the oxide zone to find find where the, the focus of mineralisation is, and then subsequently we'll go deeper with RC drilling. Lord Nelson, this is a uh, open pit that was mined by Troy. They mined uh, 207,000 ounces at four and a half grams in the oxide zone. The deposit actually plunges off to the south. Troy mined the oxide only, but that's a shallow southerly plunging deposit. Um, and out to the south, Troy drilled two holes which have got high grade mineralisation in it, but it's in fresh rock and the plant couldn't handle fresh rock, so it's still sitting there. We haven't done any drilling there at the present time because we can add more ounces quite cheaply by looking at the shallow oxide deposits in 2019. And late in 2019, we intend to get down there and drill a southerly plunge of Lord Nelson as well. So what's our forward plan? Really aiming for, uh, we've got to 260,000, we're aiming to get to 300 in the not too distant future and, and at potentially at 500,000 by the, uh, during the end of 2019. That's going to take some money and obviously we've got to raise some, uh, raise some funds to do that. However, I need to drink of water actually, <laughs> it's a bit dry. <laughs> The, um, if you consider sandstone, the previous drilling, the air core and RAB drilling, thank you very much, was uh, about 30, 30, 30 or 40 metres and uh, the really tasting, testing the very, very shallow parts of the oxide zone. We all know from uh, the deposits like Jundi, Canaanabel, Agnew and these other deposits, the, the majority of the gold is high grade and it's at depth. And that's something that hasn't been fully tested at Sandstone. In the medium term, we've got Lord Nelson, Havilar, Ladybird, Vanguard, all these prospects which have got some drill holes in them, which we can add to. And in the... We've also produced a whole series of soil anomalies which are yet to be tested. And as I flick through this, you'll see there's uh, two circles there, that's the EDAL-1 and EDAL-2 soil anomalies. They may look small there, but they're over two kilometres long each. They're right along a uh, splay off the EDAL fault. A very good place to find uh, gold-bearing fluids coming up from the mantle. We've got uh, Bulletin in there. We've got, uh, that's Vanguard down there. That's a thing called Chance. It's about two kilometres long, directly on the EDAL fault, major structure. We've got a thing called Valiant. It's about two and a half kilometres. Once again, that's another deposit which sits on a major lithostructural break, uh, a very good soil anomaly to be drill tested in 2019. Uh, that one's called Superb, and that's down on the uh, eastern margin of the Middle Island ground. So this is our uh, published resource table that York 2012, 260,000 ounces. Uh, the grade there is uh, 1.7. But as I said, it's predominantly based on the shallow oxide material that we've been uh, drilling recently and the remnant resources at Lord Henry and Lord Nelson, which we've uh, re-estimated during 2017. That's the uh, competent person statement. And here's the lovely little town of Sandstone. It's a beautiful town. When the mine shut in 2009, um, many, many houses there, Bitumen Road to Mount Magnet, Bitumen Road to, uh, to Agnew and Leinster. Uh, lovely community, flat, drive anywhere, drill anywhere. We're not in Mexico, we're not in New Guinea, we're in West, good old Western Australia. Thank you very much.